is our pleasure. I am Pastor Katie, and I'm joined today by Ray, Cindy, Greg, and multiple volunteers in the kitchen. Uh, and it is our pleasure to join you today in remembering your beloved sister, friend, and aunt, Janice Luann Fisher Giles. Today, we gather to grieve, to give thanks for Janice's life, and to entrust her to God's eternal care. And we do so by sharing good memories. Our service today includes time to share those memories. You'll also have time to share memories after the service with refreshments in the fellowship hall. Our service also includes a couple good old Lutheran songs, as well as prayers for Janice, for you, and for our world. I invite you to stand together in body and spirit as we begin our service in prayer. Holy God, in Jesus, you took children into your arms and blessed them. As so, as your children today, we trust that you have welcomed Janice into your loving care, and we seek your comfort for all who bear the pain of her death. Let our time together today be guided by your spirit of hope, and let us remember Janice well. Amen. We join together singing Amazing Grace. from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For everything there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, 
a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Now, today, is the time to remember your sister, your aunt, and your friend, Janice. This time today might be filled with good memories, hard memories, laughter or tears, or all of the above. And I invite you to share those memories with each other. We'll begin, as I said, by sharing some of those memories here today. Janice's brother, Curtis, will begin. And after he shares, anyone who would like to say something is welcome to come forward. Please use the pulpit so that you have the microphone. extend a special welcome to Janice's friends and colleagues. And uh, we didn't get to know you, but uh, as I said, I've known her all my life. And uh, some of the things I'd really like to share with you is that uh, uh, she was born in uh, 1949 to our father and mother, Frank and Irene Fisher. And uh, at that time, she had an older sister, Joyce, was unable to join us here today, and she is about 13. So Janice had the, uh, had the unique uh, opportunity to have basically two mothers, because uh, Joyce uh, absolutely helped her uh, do that. Some of the uh, uh, two things stand out about me, to me about Janice. Number one is she was a great children's librarian and great librarian, but uh, she had a zest for telling stories, animated stories to, uh, to children and kids. And as a result of that, they used their imaginations in the stories. It gave them uh, inspirations to learn how to live. And we'll never know the full impact of what she, she brought, but I know it was much. The, uh, in particular, uh, my sons, two of which are here today, um, when she would come to visit us in uh, Austin, Texas, when she was children's librarian at uh, Dallas Public Library, they always wanted to hear the story of Gunny Wolf. And uh, that was a uh, very, uh, one that Janice would tell any number of times in, uh, in her life. And so that was dedication. And uh, she was just outstanding in that, was uh, enraptured everybody in her comments that, uh, that she made in, uh, in that, and always was enthusiastic about serving in uh, both number of posts that she is at, and the last ones were the Fort Lubkin Library for the school district and the, uh, and the city. And she absolutely loved that job and uh, loved what uh, uh, the colleagues she had, and those of you who are come from that, know her from that area, thank you so much. The second thing that, uh, that Janice uh, had a passion was for pets. She would typically have a couple pets and uh, have them around, and then dogs. Uh, she got uh, very active with the Rocky Mountain Collie and Sheltie Rescue and got a, had a Sheltie rescue dog and ran uh, uh, that dog in some trials and that, and that took uh, a lot of uh, activity of, uh, of hers. Um, she was never, never without a pet or two in that, so that was great to see. And by the way, I think that 
runs in the Fisher genes because they, all the uh, Fishers and the Fisher offsprings here, I don't think there's a single one that doesn't have a dog or two, in some cases uh, more than that. <laughs> so um, a couple other things that uh, I'd like to share is that uh, we are both very proud of our Swedish heritage. Uh, we have a grand, our grandfather and grandmother were Swedes. Uh, the family came from an area called Vestervik, which is on the Baltic and halfway between Stockholm and Malmo, and that's uh, called Småland, which is in the south. So they didn't have a southern Swedish accent at all. <laughs> but uh, uh, one thing is our grandfather, Alfred Anderson, was a true patriarch. So he named all his four granddaughters, and they were Janet, Joyce, Yini, Janis. And uh, as, as many Swedes at that time, he always had a problem with the J. I didn't get named John, I got, uh, got named Curtis on that thing. But uh, that was it. She had, uh, uh, as I said, over the years had, had just really lived for her job and uh, what she could do for especially the kids, but also everybody in the, uh, in the library. But she had also focused on children's, the weekly children's uh, storytelling. And uh, it, it, she was just magical in, in that, and I couldn't say much about it. The, uh, fortunately, Debbie, my wife, and I have not been able to see her as much as we had liked over the last few years, living uh, well over a thousand miles apart, but uh, uh, she is missed and uh, she is loved by us all. And uh, my faith tells me that she is at the right hand of God right now and probably has a dog or two on her side. <laughs> so, but again, I, I thank everybody for coming and, uh, and showing uh, your, your respect and your friendship to Janice. And I know she would be, be smiling right now to folks that are here. So thank you. Memories today. Is there anyone else who would like to share anything here? All right, feel free to come on up to the to the pulpit and Good morning. I'm Cindy Lyons, and I worked with Janice at Fort Lupton. And public speaking is not my forte, but I'll do this just because. Um, what, st what struck me the most with Janice, and we were hired almost simultaneously in Fort Lupton, was her advocacy for her employees. She was always very much um, an advocate for us to be treated fairly and paid fairly for the job that we did. She advocated for us to become full-time employees of the school district, which meant some of us went from less than 20 hours a week, especially in the summertime, to 40 hours a week. Um, and with that, the benefits that came with it. Um, she definitely was um, a fan of her collies and Shelties. <laughs> she, she loved her dogs and her cats. The, the one that she had the cat that she had adopted right before um, she parted ways with Fort Lupton was Pearl. And we sat together and decided, talked through what to name the cat. And she said, she's just such a gem. And she purrs all the time. So we're, we called her Pearl <laughs> after that. But Janice was definitely um, jovial. She loved to laugh. She loved funny stories. And I think that what bothered her the most about her directorship at Fort Lupton was the fact that she wasn't able to do weekly st children's story times because of her role as the boss. Um, but she was definitely an advocate for those of us who did pre present children's story times. Prior to her employment there, we didn't have a weekly story time. And after she was employed there for, for a short period of time, we had two or three weekly story times. So, so she definitely was was an advocate for children's story times, and I enjoyed working under her.
Thank you, Cindy. Is there anyone else who would like to share a memory or two? All right. Um, as I said earlier, you get to continue sharing memories all morning after the service with refreshments. And so I invite you to pause a moment for reflection. One of the common traditions at funerals, memorials, and celebrations of life across Christian traditions is the reading of Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is a prayer. It uses the imagery of shepherds and sheep to reflect our relationship to our God, to our Creator. And so I invite you today to pray this psalm with me by reading the verses that are bolded in your bulletins. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even, Even though, though I, I walk through, through the, the darkest, darkest valley, valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You, you prepare, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We continue our scripture readings today with a story from Luke chapter 8. When a great crowd gathered and people from town to town came to Jesus, he said in a parable to them, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell upon the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on a rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The author, J.K. Rowling, says, No story lives unless someone wants to listen. The stories we love best do live in us forever. Your listening today makes all of the stories we share, stories in scripture, stories through song, and stories about Janice, your listening is what makes those effective. Your listening keeps those stories alive. My guess as most of you know, one of the stories that has come up and know a little bit about listening because of the story, the story of the gunny wolf. Now, I know some of you have heard that in a very specific way because Janice loved to tell it to you. It's a story about a little girl who lived with her mother very close to the jungle. The mother would caution the little girl to be careful and never go into the jungle because if she did, the gunny wolf might get her. So the little girl promised to never go near the jungle until one day when the mother had to go into town. She told the little girl that whatever happened, she must stay away from the jungle. 
But as the little girl sat on the doorstep waiting for her mother to return, she noticed pretty little white flowers blooming at the edge of the jungle. And she thought, wouldn't mother love to see those? I'll pick just a few. And so she sang to herself as she picked flowers one by one. Then she noticed a little further into the jungle, there were little pink flowers and thought, mother must see these too. So she sang and picked the pink flowers. A little further in, she noticed orange flowers, which she picked while she sang, until suddenly she jumped when she was face to face with the gunny wolf. The gunny wolf said, why are you scared? She said, I'm not. The gunny wolf asked, then will you sing your sweet song again? Scared, she sang, and the gunny wolf fell asleep. And she ran as fast as she could, and the gunny wolf woke, chasing her. The gunny wolf caught up and asked, little girl, why did you run? She said, I did not. The gunny wolf said, then sing that sweet song again. She sang, and the gunny wolf nodded to sleep. Again she ran, and again the gunny wolf woke. Again she sang, and again the gunny wolf slept. She ran again and again, and every time she ran, she dropped those pretty little flowers, the orange ones, the pink ones, and the white ones, until finally she reached home, no flowers in hand. And the little girl never went into the jungle again. Now those of you who have heard that story from Janice probably heard it differently. Even when some words or details are different, there's usually, though, a consistent moral or message in a story. In The Gunny Wolf, the little girl learns a lesson about listening. For some of you, The Gunny Wolf is more than a lesson. It's a memory of listening to Janice, listening to someone you love and to someone who loved you, who shared lessons with you through stories and who through stories shared herself. Because the little differences between stories, between storytellers, happen because telling stories is personal. Storytellers leave traces of themselves in the words they share. And so too, they leave those traces in those who listen. In the Gospel of Luke today, we heard a parable from Jesus, where Jesus says, let anyone with ears to hear listen. Now, if you're not familiar with parables, you ought to know that the word parable comes from ancient Greek, which is the language in which Luke wrote, and it comes from the word parabole, which is a combination of two words, para, like parallel, like parallel lines. You remember learning about those in school? That means alongside. The second word is bole, which you can remember because it sounds a little bit like ball. It means to throw or to cast. So, parabole, translated into our language, means thrown alongside. It's a story that parallels our reality. Now, in Jesus' reality, in his real life, there were Romans controlling his people. There were both government leaders and temple or religious leaders misusing their power over people. And then there was Jesus, who was teaching people to instead love others be they family, neighbors, or even enemies. It's a complicated reality, perhaps rocky, thorny ground. And yet, Jesus goes about helping people, healing them, feeding them, showing them love, and telling them stories about hope. In Jesus' context, the point of the parable, the moral of the story, is supposed to resonate with the lives of those who hear it. In that story, Jesus begs everyone who has ears to hear to actually listen, to let the words he speaks sink in like seed in the dirt and to grow like seeds in good soil. Planting like that is what storytellers do placing words intentionally and waiting for them to grow, hoping that someone listens 
that faith or hope or love or any good thing grows in the hearts and minds of those who hear. Today we celebrate a story, a story beginning at the beginning, the beginning of time, of creation, of all that is, a story with adventure, drama, believe it or not, comedy too. A story made up of stories, not all of them appropriate for all listeners or readers either, but all of them part of this larger story about God's love for humankind. A story that doesn't end, but lives forever. A story that no cross, no grave could kill or bury. A story that despite the fact it is so unbelievable, we tell it again and again. A story that draws us in, sometimes pushes us away. A story that gives us hope, as long as we want to listen. It's a story that promises that your beloved Janice has died in Christ and yet lives in Christ. A story that promises the pieces of her story that you hold dear, that live in you today, are pieces of God's story that promises everlasting life, that promises to live on in the stories you tell and the actions you take. In memory of Janice, in glory of God, and in God's love for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to pray with me today. Our prayer response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the gathering of your people, in the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opens the kingdom of heaven to all. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to live as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now do perhaps the most holy thing we can do as people for our beloved who have passed. And that is called the commendation. Now, in the commendation in the Lutheran tradition and most Christian traditions, this is a time to remember the people we have loved today to remember Janice. And to know that as much as you cared for her in her life here, that now she is entirely in God's care. We get to pray this prayer telling God that we trust God to care for her now and to welcome her into eternal life. 
And we do that with hope that we too will join in that life. And so while we do this, I invite you all to stand again in body or spirit and to take a position of blessing. And to do that, I'm going to invite us to kind of direct yourselves towards Janice's picture here. For us, that's going to be the focus point. And take your arms out. You might have to cross over each other a little bit. That's okay. If you want to hold someone's hand, that's cool too. And please listen as we pray. Let us commend Janice to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful God, we commend your servant. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, a teller of your own story. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. You may be seated as we are sent with the blessing of this song. Children of Safely in his bosom gather, nestling by no star in heaven, such a refuge there was given. God his own doth tend and nourish, in his holy courts they flourish from all he spares them in his mighty arms he bears them neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever unto them his grace he showeth and their soul Though he giveth or he taketh, God his children ne'er forsaketh. His the loving purpose solely to preserve them pure and whole. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We go in peace, and I invite you to join us in the fellowship hall for refreshments and continued celebration and memories. <laughs>